Our first question of the day is from Alice in Little Rock, and she writes, I'm 28, and I've been part of the FIRE movement. I've been saving an extreme amount for the last 10 years, but I'm getting tired of it. I stumbled onto your show on YouTube, and I'm starting to realize that I don't actually have a plan. I don't want to spend my whole life working, but I also want to be sure I can still be financially independent when I do retire. What should I do? Alice, thanks very much. Some people may be hearing that term fire movement for the first time. So let's define that first off before we get in to answering Alice's question. FIRE is an acronym. And I actually looked it up online. Nobody really knows who created it. <laughs> but it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And the concept's been around for almost 30 years. It was actually uh, generated from a book written in 19. 19- 92, not necessarily about the fire movement, but about the concept of living very frugally, uh, saving up to 70% of your income and investing it, and then withdrawing an arbitrary percentage of three, maybe 4% from a portfolio at a specified retirement date. It's that It probably goes a little deeper than that, right. but that's pretty much it, John. And, and it has caught fire, if you will. In recent years, I think the millennial generation has really uh, latched on to this concept of if I really live extremely frugal for a short period of time, I can then no longer work. Yeah, but, and the concept is is there, but Scott, I have to say that that the execution is is a real problem from a, a number of different angles. We believe in financial independence, one hundred percent. We believe at Gen Wealth that financial independence is something that every investor should strive for. The whole retire early part becomes problematical from not only a longevity standpoint, meaning you've got to stretch this money over a very very long period of time, and you've got to have have consistently good returns over that period of time, which you know you're probably not going to get just because of the economy and the way that it works and things of that nature. But I think you've also got to to think about what does 40, 45 years of not working really look like? Mm. I don't have any idea what that really looks like because it's not something that I've ever even thought about. But but clearly there are people that, that are motivated to do this and they are living, as Dave Ramsey would like to say, on beans and rice one day and rice and beans the next day. All for what? That, yeah. that would be my question. Uh, all for what? And then secondly, I think that when you think about what is it that you're going to do with your time, hmm. if you've got some productive things that you can do, then that's great. If you're going to sit around the house and eat donuts, then you're probably not going to live very long. So sure. it's not a whole lot of need for saving a lot of money in that case. Hmm. But but I do think that that this really does point out Something that we've said for a long time about retirement, doesn't matter whether it's early or late, retirement is an income problem, not an asset problem. Yeah. And it's you don't have some of the tools available to you early in your lifespan that you do later in your lifespan, like Social Security, like pensions, things of that nature. Yeah, and Alice admits as much here that she's getting tired of it. it it's, a, it's a hard path to leave, uh, to 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 lead when you're living on beans and rice and then rice and beans. Yep. And, and, I, and she says here she realizes she doesn't actually have a plan because that's what maybe is lacking here with the fire movement here is when it says financial independence retire early. Well, what does that mean to Alice? Because financial independence for Alice and her process of discovering it is going to be different than financial independence for Scott, right? Because it is an income problem that needs a solution. And so let's kind of dive into two really big uh, red flags about retiring too early when it comes to solving the income puzzle. Because the concept, as we mentioned, again, was about saving up to 70% of your savings, uh, saving up to 70% of your income, and then investing it, and then living off of either the income, the interest, or uh, the actual principal of that investment portfolio. There there almost be no way you could live off the interest and, and, uh, and dividend income. You have to be willing to risk your principal. But that is the stress for everyone who reaches retirement, right? They have to make their money last. They get help when they're older. Because let's talk about qualified plans. Because if you are working, and you're putting money into a 401k, or maybe you're saving in an IRA. Those are qualified retirement accounts. The qualification on them is you have to be 59 and a half. Now, there are some 
uh, extenuating circumstances on the 401k, you could actually be as young as 55, but a long way off from being in, included in the FIRE movement. And if you aren't those ages, then you can't withdraw your funds without being penalized. There's yeah. a 10% penalty for early withdrawal. Yeah, there is. And, and Scott, w- one of the biggest factors here is that if you think about the people that are retiring successfully, they've been diligent investors in a 401k plan, but they've also been getting the company match. Right. And that company match has a big impact on the longevity of that 401k plan. Mm-hmm. And so if you can't use the 401k plan, let's say for a significant part of your retirement, quote unquote, you years, let's say you retire at 45 instead of 65. Well, that's 20 years that you've got to to live on money that is coming from somewhere other than your 401k plan. So you've got that problem. The other problem that a lot of people don't really think about is they think, well, I can get by on X number of dollars per month. And maybe that's true right now. But what does inflation do to you right. long term? And I think inflation might be the the water hose that has kind of dampened the fire movement of late. Yeah, inflation has been running hot, of course, since 2021, cooling down now. But even if you take the very mild average inflation number over the long period of time in the United States, it's about 3%. So if you figure that your dollar is going to need to increase by 3% on an annual basis over your retirement. Well, it's one thing to be able to create inflation-adjusted raises for someone who's going to be retired for 20 or 25 years. It's another thing to create it for 40 or 45 years, because if you think about it just as a general rule, that dollar is going to need to be two about every 18 years, Mm -hmm. about 18, 19, maybe up to 20. But you're going to have to double and then double again. And that's going to really put an excess strain on your portfolio. So let's take it off the portfolio now, John, and just talk about guaranteed income, right? Yeah. So uh, Social Security is one of the things I wanted to talk about. And, you know, if, even if you say, okay, I'll claim Social Security at 62, well, you've got to get to 62. And then when you get to 62, do you have anything that you could supplement your Social Security that's left after 20 years of living on all of your money that you haven't taken before? So it is an incredibly uh, complex problem. It's very, you know, admirable that people would try to do it. Yeah. But I think that the practicality of it really does run aground as you begin to, you know, think about, you know, exactly how would you actually make all of this work? What are the semantical things that you have to do to make this all work? And look, here's here's the bottom line. Providing income to somebody for 20 or 25 years is hard enough when they retire, let's say at 60 or 65. To try to provide that for 45 years that is a huge undertaking, and it requires a lot of money, a lot of planning, a lot of time, and a lot of scrimping. And you have to just ask yourself, what part of life is it that I'm leaving on the table yeah. by doing that just to be able to be free from work? And I will also say that there is a great benefit to work. I think yeah. there is a great benefit. A lot of this is mindset, and, and I think there's a great benefit to working if you're working in the right job. What I think is happening, Scott, with this fire movement is a lot of times people are not finding their job to be fulfilling to them. They have been placed in a, a, a company to make money as opposed to really uh, – fulfill their purpose. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people really kind of get disillusioned with work and get driven to something like this fire movement. But then they get disillusioned with the fire movement because it's so hard. Yeah. So rather than the fire movement, maybe they need to find a way to light a fire, right? Some that's passion right. in their work uh, place or in their job or in their chosen profession. So if you're listening out there and you're like Alice, or if you're a little older and you're going, well, you know, she's saying I'm saving up to 70% of her savings and that's not going to be enough. Well, that's not what we're saying. And we're not saying uh, that you should have an arbitrary withdrawal percentage, a 3 to 4%. There's no magic answer here. It all depends on unique circumstances. Alice is going to be discovering financial independence in a different way than someone else would. It is an income solution. If you want the answer of when you can retire, you do actually, as Alice has mentioned, need to have a plan, a written plan, on paper, on purpose, that shows you your monthly income from a determined portfolio balance when taking into account other things like Social Security, maybe there's a pension, uh, what other sources of income do you have that you can stack the investment uh, withdrawals on top of, and when are you going to retire? And if you're short of that mark and you're determining, well, when can I retire, 
Then you look at where you are today, how much you need to contribute. We'll have that answer in the written plan. How much do you need to contribute to get to where you want to be? And those are the, all the variables. It's way, it's way more complex, John, than just a simple uh, savings percentage or even withdrawal percentage strategy. 